welcome back to the Glow Girl podcast. I am Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and I am so glad to have today. I'm going to make a joke so that I don't screw her name up. <laughs> but she, um, a new, a new friend of mine, Kelsey Kenry, and she, guys, I just have to say, um, she just, she was, we just did a little test before we got started, you know, where as I'm introducing and saying, hey, just want to make sure I've got your name correct. So Kelsey, her last name, it's spelled very different from the way you pronounce it. So <laughs> she's a great sport about it. And I was wrong, of course, when I previously tried to pronounce it. So I'm going to let her tell a little story about that as well when she gets started. But Kelsey is a speaker and an ICF certified life coach. She gives women sustainable tools to run their lives um, without fear and to find happiness. And I think a key word in that is that the tools are sustainable. It's not a one hit wonder. She is giving you tools that will last for a lifetime. So welcome, Kelsey, to the Glow Up Girl podcast. Thank you for having me. I love it. I'm just like laughing over here, just thinking about our initials conversation. <laughs> so well, please get us started by um, just telling the audience um, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So my name is Kelsey Ken Rye. Ken like the doll, Rye like the bread. That's our my mother-in-law's secret <laughs> pronunciation. Little fun thing there. And yeah, I'm a life coach and I like to call myself more of like I, I work a lot with with the mindset. And in my coaching, there's two parts. It's underlying work and then physical action. So everything pretty much revolves around that. But I primarily work with women who are overworked and underfulfilled. So I see so many women putting themselves in and putting pressure on themselves in the workplace and in our careers to drive and be successful and just having all these achievements and all the success, but it never feels like enough. And so just working with women to get their confidence back and to bring fulfillment and freedom back to their lives. So that's what I do. And I live in Florida and I have a little boy who's four and a little girl who's two. And I'm married to my best friend and we have a cookie company, which is also fun. So oh, wow. <laughs> we like to work out and eat food and change people's lives. It's a, it's a good mix. <laughs> I love that. I definitely, I love that you have a cookie company and I love that you work out because I think it's important for people to know that you can have the balance of both. Like you don't have to like give up foods that you love, you know, in in order to like be healthy as well. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so important. Like that balance. It's interesting because my coaching, I actually started in the fitness industry as a coach, which is crazy as it sounds to me now, like almost 10 years ago. And it was just like, you know how people are so all or nothing, like extremes yes. are so sexy. So it's just like, yeah, but like, I don't want to, and I've been a person of extremes. I was a figure pro. So I did multiple figure seasons and I competed in powerlifting. I've been at the extremes of things, but I'm like, I just, I like to move my body because it makes me feel good and it makes my brain work good and it makes me happier. Mm -hmm. And I like to eat cookies because they taste good. So I want to do both. <laughs> exactly. And I, I agree with you. That's so important. And I mean, I think too, as we get older, you know, when you're younger, you're always like, you're trying to, I'm going to say for myself, you spend this time trying to recapture what you were like, oh, when I was in college, I was this size or oh, when before I got married, I was this size. So you're always like trying to recapture this. So you're just yo-yoing. You're up and down, up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, like I always, I'm like, I just want to be healthy. Like, I just want to, I want to be healthy and I want to be strong. So what I've done a lot over the last like seven, eight months since we've been in the pandemic, I've been doing strength work to try and, and be stronger versus just, it's not as much about like just trying to lose weight. It's just that I want to be, I want to be lean and I want to be strong because as you get older, I mean, you need to be stronger. Yeah. You know, I really like that you brought that up because like, I, I love strength training, but the, the part that's really important about that is like, when I was working in fitness and the reason really why I made the transition into the life coaching space is because 
as women, like so much of what you're talking about to where it's just like, we focus on like surface level things. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're like, if I lose weight, this diet, make my body different then then this other thing will change. And it's just like, that's the unsustainable things to where it's like, that's why we're always yo-yoing because we're not dealing with the root issue at hand. And so it was like when I was a fitness coach and I'm like, why are all these fitness coaches not asking people about stress and anxiety and the other things in their environments? That doesn't Mm -hmm. make sense to me. And so it was very like organic that I just started asking these questions. But it's it's interesting because when you shift the focus off trying to make your body bigger, smaller, whatever, and you shift your focus to. I want to be healthy for an actual purpose of, you know, like for me being able to play with my kids and things like Mm -hmm. that, that, that is meaningful that you take off like so much pressure in your body. The health comes as like a byproduct of the habits that you build having that purpose Mm -hmm. versus something so shallow is like, I want my like arms to look a certain way. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate though, um, that that is what we see, you know, what people see in the world. So a lot of times people are trying to live up to this unobtainable, like goal out there. And once you, like you said, once you can get that, clear that out and you are working to like, I want to, I want to just feel good. Like I want to work out because I, it makes me feel good. And I like starting the morning with it. And I love a good Peloton workout, like finding Peloton workouts have been like the absolute most like amazing thing but then also introducing like I never meditated until this year and so now I've been I actively meditate and it's it's like man it'll change your life you are you're talking about the peloton and meditating like we we are best friends (laughs) (laughs) it's like awesome I'm like wait why was I not doing this before because this whole meditation thing is like phenomenal. (laughs) It is. It's so funny because it was so hard for me. Like the consistency queen was, it was so (laughs) hard for me to consistently meditate because I was so the person that's like, and we've all done this with something in our lives that I was like, I'm doing something wrong. Like why Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm not supposed to be thinking about all this stuff. I'm supposed to be like feeling peaceful or whatever myself, (laughs) which goes back to what you said about like us having like unrealistic expectations and standards that are, that are just yeah. not real. So, but yeah, man, it's so, it's so, it really is so impactful. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. So um, with your programs, um, so let's talk about some of the women, because you know how a lot of times people may be experiencing the very thing that you help women to overcome or to deal with your tools for, um, and they just not, they're not able to see it. So what types of um, women normally come um, through your um, coaching program? Mm, I love this question. And I I think this is, this is really kind of like the evolution of people in general is like the, my client has shifted and changed as I've shifted and changed. Mm. And I think it's powerful that we have the ability and the freedom to do that. And I think now like, the more I become aligned with myself and my, my purpose, the mm-hmm. more, the more the right clients come to me to where <laughs> this is a very interesting way of saying it, but it's a, actually a recent realization of mine is like, my clients are me. Like mm-hmm. they are a reflection of where I was a week ago or where I was a year ago or five years ago or something like that. And it's yeah. like, I think that that is the best way to put it. And so like now currently what I, I I'm seeing is working with these overworked women and working with people who are sacrificing their mental and their physical health for the expense of their income or climbing a a corporate ladder or whatever that looks like for them to where we are so as a society and as a culture, we are so defined by our success and mm-hmm. what we produce that right. stepping outside of that, we, we, we are forced to basically detach from ourselves, right. Mm-hmm. To where it's mm-hmm. just like, we are put in this world and here's, it's like, here, here's a bunch 
of fucking distractions that <laughs> right. pull you away from who you really are. Yes. Yes. And yep. so now it's it the the client that comes to me is that is that person who is detached, yeah. who is living on autopilot, who is filling her calendar with with work things and disappearing from her family life. And yes. you know, I I've been on on both sides and it's so beautiful for me to be able to see people and see myself in them and to be able to walk through somebody mm-hmm. that I something with somebody that I understand. Mhm. I, I actually really, really love that. Um, I wrote, as you were talking, I wrote this down because I wanted to make sure I wanted to commend you because so many times, you know, when people are coaching others, you don't always get that realness. I love that your clients are you, are they are extensions of who you were at one point, who you are evolving to be. And I think that's amazing because a lot of times I think people that are doing the coaching, people forget that you're an everyday regular person too, that is still evolving and growing. You're and, right. And I just, I, and I applaud, I just, well done. I was about to say, go sister, when you said this, but I, didn't <laughs> want to, I don't want to interrupt you while you're talking, but I absolutely, I just, I love that because it is so important, you know, even, you know, like I always tell people like you should always be evolving or you should just die. Like if you're not continuing to grow and evolve and change, then what is the purpose? What is even the purpose of doing, um, doing it? If you're just wanting to stay in the same place and everything you touched on with women, you know, who are, are detached, like every day you talk to those people who are, you know, filling their life with, oh my God, I'm so busy at work and I've got all this going on at work or I'm trying to climb the ladder and they are just, you know, putting themselves to the side. They're putting their families to the side. They're just in this like autopilot of I've got to check these things off the list in order to get there. But what happens when you don't actually get there? Because Mm -hmm. that happens a lot, (laughs) you know, in the world. And it happens a lot to women who are sacrificing so much only to not get to that prize at the end. Mm, That's such a good point. That's burnout though. That's exactly what, that's exactly what happens. You're sacrificing and you're giving and you're giving and you're giving and your cup's empty. You're like, your battery's completely dead. You're like plugged into like an external battery. That's dead. The outlet's like blown up. It's like, there's nothing left. Then you're still going. And then it's like, oh, you have nothing left to give. So then you start to shut down at work because there's nothing left. You start to detach and you're just going through the motions and then that's noticed. And then you get fired and then you're like, what am I even doing with my life anymore? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I have to say, as you're describing that, I visually saw that. Like I saw it frame. I saw it frame by frame. That's, I don't know what it is, but like when I am in like talking to clients, I, I start, maybe it's meditation that's doing this to me, but I start visualizing things. I had a client this past week that I was talking to her a lot of like, the feeling kind of this week that's been recurring is like the frustration of being stuck and trapped. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking, we were talking through this and I was like, okay, you're a frog. (laughs) (laughs) Stay with me. You're a frog. You're on a lily pad. Your lily pad has a shit ton of holes in it. Like you are drowning. Like Mm -hmm. the only thing above the water is like your little frog mouth. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yes. And I'm like, But you can see there's a ton of other lily pads and the suffering that you're choosing and the frustration and the stuck feeling is only because you're not jumping. You're not making a move. You bet. Kelsey, you might have said something, girl. (laughs) Your examples, these analogies are excellent. Oh my God. I I saw that frog on the lily pad and and I just saw like little eyes like (laughs) yeah like I've been that frog so I know what it looks like where you're like there and you're like someone please save me and it's like you have to save yourself like jump (laughs) it's like just do it do it you got the legs jump girl jump yes exactly I absolutely that is I love that 
But, you know, I, I love it because it's so real. And um, the way that you connect, you know, the way you are probably able to connect to your clients. I mean, the way that you're just even connecting to me and telling me these stories, like, I'm like, oh, my God, yes, P- yes. Yes, I've yes been there, done that. Was there like a year ago? Was that fraud too? And didn't just finally when you jump, you're like, oh wow, who knew? Right? And, yeah, yeah. So, so you have. Look, we're gonna talk about now how you get people out of that stuck feeling. Okay. Um, you have you've written a book. I have. Your book is called Below the Surface a confidence building framework that helps people to reach their goals without overwhelm. So that is a mouthful in itself because there are so many people who are just dealing with the feelings of being overwhelmed. So let's talk about why this book, why now, and some of the key messages from your book. Mm. So my book was like a lily pad kind of. It was like something I sat on for a really long time. I draw a lot of my purpose from my own story with my history with drugs and alcohol and my my rock bottom being my my third arrest and I talk about all of that in the book, but it was like I felt I've always felt this calling like every single day to where it's like some something more bigger impact. Like that's why I've always been drawn to, to speaking and coaching. Mm-hmm. And so like, I'm like, I need to tell my story to where more people can read it, but it didn't feel like this is like women's brains and how we are. I'm like, that's not enough. So <laughs> I was like, how can I, cause I read so, so much. And I'm like, I like certain pieces of certain books, but I'm like, what if I take my story Mm-hmm. And then I describe the things that I went through, how I got out of them. And then I give the person actionable steps to do the same. Mm-hmm. Like, what if I do that? And then it was like, the idea was there. And then it was just like the sitting, you know, the things that always stop all of us, like that's going to be too hard. I don't have time. All the surface level bullshit that we tell ourselves when underneath that, it's just fear you know, I'm going to fail. Who's going to, who's going to read my book? Who am I to write a book? All of those things, the imposter syndrome, I felt all of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the book was an incredible experience. It's still like weird to me. Like (laughs) when I hit like the, the best sellers on Amazon, I was like, Whoa, like what? You know, (laughs) cause I'm like, I don't know. I'm just still like, I'm just a person that like struggles and goes through shit like everybody else. But yeah. 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 So it's, it's, uh, it's written in that way to where it's kind of like the steps that I went through Mm -hmm. and the steps that everybody needs to go to go through in order to find like more fulfillment and more freedom in their lives. And the more I learn and grow, the more I want to give back. And so I'm like, I need to write another book and another book. (laughs) Yes. I mean, I I think that's really important. And I think the transparency of it all is what uh, is why people connect to it because it is you being, you know, very, you know, honest and raw with your own personal experience. Um, But you know, as you talk about um, beating the cycle of feeling overwhelmed. And we know that starts because I I personally know that this started <laughs> for myself. It starts from a place of um, recognizing your own value and, and building and boundaries, right? Um, so when I was probably, mm, I guess, it, gosh, like 2020, it seems like years have gone by, but really this was last year. Um, And so, I mean, I remember when I first started therapy, I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. And, you know, and as we started to talk through and work through the issues, it was just, no, you don't have any boundaries. Like, I mean, you're overwhelmed because you're doing it. You're allowing everyone to do it to you because this is what you accept. What are some of the steps that you um, tell women that they can begin to take to start to, you know, recognize their worth and their value um, as it relates to feeling that overwhelm. That's it's so good. It's so it's so powerful that like you that you went to therapy and that you recognize like 
it's so cool to make those links because it's, Mm -hmm. it goes right along with like what I would say as far as like the first thing that people really need to do is like recognizing obviously that you're valuable enough. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's always going to be the first step to where it's like, I talk about this in my book, but it's like just having a glimmer of hope. Like for me, it was like, there was a glimmer of hope of something. There was a reason why I needed to stay alive. Cause if I kept going on the path I was on, I, w- I wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. And just following that was enough to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm worth living. Like that's where I had to start truly. Right. And so once you see that worth, then it's the hardest thing to do for people. And it's exactly what you were just, ta- what you were just saying about that honest inventory and taking ownership of like where you are is where you put yourself Mm -hmm. like, and people don't want to do that. And like, I have another little analogy, fun thing for you. So (laughs) I use um, the storage unit. So we talk about as women, we love to like organize things and put them in boxes and like put a label on them, make them pretty. And then we put them away. I don't want to look at that anymore. Shame, fear, struggles, experiences. So we'll just take them and then we'll lock them up in a storage unit. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just kind of live through our life surface level. I'm good now. That's something that happened a long time ago. Yada, yada. Right. Yeah. We're still, you're still paying rent on the storage unit. That shit is still there. (laughs) Yeah. All, all the boxes are still there. Yeah. Yeah. And the dust is climbing. Like you're going to need a bigger storage unit because eventually like that's, it it comes out. And that's the thing that people don't understand is they think that if they bury stuff Mm -hmm. deep enough, it doesn't matter. And the truth is, is like people don't make the links unless they go through something like my coaching therapy, something where you make links like that. Yeah. Like had you not gone through that, you wouldn't be like, oh shit, it's my fault for not <laughs> setting boundaries. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then you get to do something about it. That's mm-hmm. the powerful part is like, then you get to take back power, take back control and say, okay, I did get myself here. That sucks. I got a lot of stuff to look at which feels Mm -hmm. overwhelming, which is why people don't want to do the work, but truly, and you Mm -hmm. probably know this from experience when you're in it and it feels really heavy, you get to walk, you can carry the heaviness or you can drop the heaviness by walking Mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to walk through my life carrying like a backpack full of a bunch of bricks. I'm good. (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) No, thank you. Nor will I carry anybody else's bricks. <laughs> good. <laughs> exactly. Good point. Seriously. Yes. Because so many women are like, I mean, they're carrying their own stuff and then you're carrying somebody else's stuff. And, you know, one thing that <laughs> my therapist always says is, you know, you don't have to accept in every invite to all the parties. Like you can choose like your invite. Hey, thanks for the invite, but I'm not showing up today. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I definitely, I, I agree with you. And I, and I, I do, I hate, I, I love that analogy. Like I love that because that is what so many people, it's like, ah, uh, no, we can just tuck it away and I can just move on. And after a while, you know, to go back to your first analogy, where you get to that place of feeling detached because you've just burned yourself out, but you've burned yourself out too, because you're running because you refuse to deal with the things of the past that are holding you back. Like, it's like, I almost see see like a person trying to walk up the stairs and it's like all those things, like you said, shame is like pulling them down, fear, pulling them down. Like they can't get to that next level because they're unable to just simply recognize. I mean, it doesn't feel good. Like none of it feels good when you actually have to talk about the things that actually have made us who we are today. None of that mm. feels good. I mean, like uh, ultimately when I was <laughs> the one of the, the, the best and worst days of therapy for me was when I came to the realization that these people are treating me this way because I let them treat me this way. They're just howling the work on me because I take the work and I smile. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got it. I'll take care of it. When in reality, it's like, no, like, no, I'm retraining you 
So 2020 for me has been a season of, no, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. But here's here's what you can do. And just, re, you know, when she said that, like, you have to retrain people and you have to teach people how to treat you. Like, it was the scariest thing for me in the beginning because I was like, oh, oh shit. Um, <laughs> what, if, what if, you know, what if these people don't like the new, you know, me? And yes. Me? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and, you know, of course, when, you know, because even it's in the closest relationships, which tend to be, you know, our significant others. And I'll never forget, you know, my husband, um, um, he was like, oh, wait, he's like, who's this, who's this new you? Like, what's going on? He's like, what's going on? It's like you're changing. I was like, you're damn right. I am, sir. Mm-hmm. Like I am. And so you can either, you can either get on this train and come with me or you can be left at the station. Mm-hmm. Now on the inside, I was like, girl, you really saying that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, please come, please take the like, train with me. I was, please. Like, I was like, girl, you saying that for real? <laughs> but you know, but it's like the best thing you can do for yourself because it is, it's a, it's, it's choice. And we have, we have the choice and we have the right to be treated the way that we want to be treated by all. And that mm-hmm. starts with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so right. You're so right. And it really is like, now I'm like picturing the person up the stairs. We need to like write a book about this. Right. We, <laughs> Here's our analogies. Look, I can't draw at all, but I, I can vis- I can see it. I see it. Some, some stick figures and my little frog will just draw a couple of eyes. <laughs> It'll be great. Here but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that it's it's so interesting because like I love that you brought up relationships too because it's like people get stuck in that like oh but when it's good it's really good and so that like that's like the band aid for like mm-hmm. all the bad shit happening. Yes, it's like you got to fix that. It's still there. <laughs> yeah, like it's a cycle. <laughs> yes, you do. You gotta. I mean, if you mm-hmm. don't, it just comes back. So just like you, and we're going to deal with it today. And I <laughs> you know like people have been dealing with stuff, especially in this year and being at home and being together more, um, you know, and that's been great. You know, like it's been good and bad. There have been some moments where it's some ugly moments. And I think I even talked about it on the show, maybe back in, um, I don't know if it was June, but there's at this one point where I was like, either I'm going to push this man out of this house one of us is not going to make it here. <laughs> but it yeah. was eventually like, well, let's just have a conversation about it. Like, what is bothering, you know, like, let's just talk. And so, you know, when you do that, I mean, it's amazing things happen when you just have a conversation. Man, that's, that's, you're speaking my language there because effective <laughs> communication, like, we expect for people to just, especially as women, like, cause we're the worst because we expect for our partners to read our minds and yes. we're like, why is he not helping me with this? Why is he not doing this? Why is he like yeah. going off in our heads? And we're like, like my clients will do this. And I'll be like, um, so have you told him that you wanted him to do that? Well, no, but he should. And I'm like, no, they don't like, you have to understand no. they're like, right. They live in this circle, like right here. They don't see anything outside that. <laughs> That is so true. It's, it's, I mean, you, that is spot on because they don't. And once you stop thinking that they can read your mind or also thinking that a man communicates in the same way that you do, that you do. I think that is also the other thing. I mean, I was uh, guilty of that for um, many years where I just want it because I was comfortable talking about my feelings and I'm like, well, let's just talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Does and they're it like mean- no thank you <laughs> yeah, it's like, I am checking out of this conversation it's like the it's like the Homer Simpson meme he is like I am going back into the bushes no thanks <laughs> yes yes um, but it's yeah I mean it's just it, it, it is just really important because all those things play a part in the feelings of overwhelm and the feelings of things that drag and hold us back as women. And, and you talked about earlier um, something that, you know, just in telling your story, owning your past, so important. Accepting, you know, like owning your past, you say accepting your present and letting go of shame that holds you back. Why is this so important in um, building confidence for women? Yeah, that's such a great question. I love that question. 
You know, the truth is, is that like authenticity always wins and you cannot be authentic if you do not own who you are. It's just part, it's part of you. And I think that that's, that's the thing have to, people have to realize is like your experiences are not you, right? Like the, the things that I, the choices that I made with drugs, with alcohol, with sex, with the things that I did with my body, those, those were choices that I made. They don't define me, but they are an important part of my story because I pull and teach from those places still. Mm -hmm. And so if we are, we go back to the same thing about carrying that backpack or trying to climb those stairs and something just pulling you back. That's shame. That's fear. And like, I don't know if you're a a Brene Brown fan, but she, Mm -hmm. I mean, she is incredible and talks, has done so much work around shame. And she just talks about how it can't live in light. And so If you think about wanting to be confident, wanting to show up anywhere confidently, Mm -hmm. think about the places where we feel most confident. It's with the people that know us. Mm -hmm. It's with the people that know all of us. So we don't have to pretend to be anything that we're not. And so when we can show up like that and we can show up authentically, authenticity, that's, that's where we pull confidence from. They're, they're directly connected. And so if we own who we are and we can say, yes, that's something that I went through. That's something that I did. That's something, you know, I, I'm not, you, you don't have to be proud of it. You just have to say, yes, that, that is right. something that happened. And that's, that's really the truth of it is that if we want to be confident people and we want to show up confidently, you can't be like a chameleon. You can't be someone different, like in your work, in your home life. Like you have to be the same person because it would be exhausting to yes. try to be somebody different in every area that you go to. Yep. And that is really interesting that you um, touch on that because I do think that that is what happens. Um, that actually, that adds to that overwhelm and eventual burnout because Women sometimes feel, especially when you're um, in a corporate workplace, um, and people feel like they can't be, you know, who they are 100%, right? Because it's like, well, if I show this side of me, then they're going to think, oh, you know, she's doing that thing. Or, you know, um, so their women are trying to wear these masks almost, and they are, cha- they are a chameleon, they're changing. You know, I'm in this meeting, mm-hmm. so I'm going to be this way. And when, you know, it is more liberating and you feel so much freer when you're just like, nope, this is who I am. And, and it does take time for people um, to truly get to that place, right? And especially if you've been someone, say you've been working in corporate America for 20, 15, 20 years, and you've been doing that whole, you know, chameleon bit <laughs> to be this way at work, and then you go home and then you're other, it has to be exhausting. Yeah, it is. You're, I think you're really, that's a great point about it, it contributing to, to overwhelm to where really like trying to be different people. I mean, it's like enough that we have a million responsibilities. So then trying to like right. put on a different costume every time you go somewhere, <laughs> yes. like you're going to be sweaty. <laughs> Right. I mean, I love clothes like nobody else, but my God, (laughs) keep changing outfits. (laughs) Quick change. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, this is fine. That's that's I literally won't even like try clothes on in the store in the fitting room. I'm like, it's too I don't want to try this on twice. So we'll just see what happens when we get home. (laughs) (laughs) I know it's so it's so exhausting, like to do it there. That's why I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, if it doesn't fit, hey, I mean. I'll, I'll take that, whatever. <laughs> I can't, like, I, I, I can't do this in this little room. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. I'm like, another analogy. I'm like, oh, it's a little room and you're trying to change costumes. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. it's like you, you <laughs> yeah, because the room is full of costumes and accessories and all your, all the things you need to be that character. So, <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about how you help women. What are steps that you teach women um, as it relates to setting goals and achieving them? Because this is important. I mean, we're now getting to the point in the year where people are starting to look at, you know, 2021 and they're looking at goals from 2020. And um, how do you help women and, and um, 
set realistic um, goals that they can that are achievable. Yeah, it's such a good it's such a good question. I love talking about goal setting too because it's like fiery, you know, it's exciting mm-hmm. when you're mm-hmm. working towards something new. So the first thing that I, that's important is that you draw your goals from you and not other people. So a lot of times we're setting goals based on what we think we should be doing, a certain timeline that we're supposed to achieve or whatever we're telling ourselves. And so making sure that we're setting goals from a place of like, I want this and making sure that you have an actual purpose, preferably that ties into something that is within your own values, your personal values. That's where, that's where you draw your goals from. Because a lot of times we just are saying like, Oh, like, like I want to be healthy. It's a great example. Right. But it's Mm -hmm. like, if, if that's not a purpose driven goal, if we want to be healthy because we want our arms to look better versus if we want to be healthy because we want to live a long time, because we want to travel with our partner and play with our kids, it has to be purpose driven and it has to be something that you want for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the first thing to think about before you start like saying, I want to do this. I want to do that. You need to ask yourself, is this for me? Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose driving me? What, what's going to happen on the hard days when I don't want to, what am I going to do? Yes. Cause that is, that's when it counts. It's like, yes. Yeah. I mean, you can play around with it and it sounds all pretty when you're like making the goal, but it's those moments when you're like, Oh my God, I don't feel like getting on this bike, but I'm going to get on this bike because this is going to make me feel good. And I'm, you know, going to continue to, I'm going to feel good. Like I'm just, I'm not going to be lazy, you know? Yes. I deserve to feel good Yes, because feeling good for me, it's also, this is like a side note outside of goals, but there's a couple things that are important here that we're talking about this. The first thing is like, thinking about the ripple effect. So like when I get up, like I don't want to fucking get up at 5 a.m. I don't like it. It's not fun. I don't jump out of bed excited. I have to because me getting up at 5 a.m. means I get quiet time for myself. It means Mm -hmm. I get to work on my health. And by doing that, I show up better as a mom, better as a partner, better as a coach. So it ripples into that. And because Mm -hmm. I show up in those areas, it ripples for them. Yeah, yep, they're yep. happier. So I always like to pull things out, like to take it out of the micro at that moment where you're like, our child brain is like, I don't want to and pull it back to the macro of like, but if, if I do, what will it create for me? What yes. kind of freedom will it give me? So like, that's such an important thing. That is. I always talk about the people are like, how are you so motivated? I'm like, I'm not. I'm disciplined, but Mm -hmm. I got to a place of discipline because the pivotal moment is, you know how, when we start with a new goal and we're motivated, we're like, it's new, it's fresh. This is hot. Mm -hmm. Let's do it kind of Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And so it's like the first few days and then like the fourth day, you're like, "Mm, not feeling it. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so that's the moment. So there is like, I wish I could, I wish I could draw right now. I need a drawing board right now. So there's a line, right? There's a line of motivation. Like that's where we start. And then when that motivation starts to dip, what happens in that pivotal moment is that is where your consistency kicks in Mm -hmm. to where it's like, if I can show up on this day that I don't want to, then I can show up on another day that I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then that builds into discipline. So very rarely am I motivated. Yeah. It's just, I'm disciplined and I show yes. up because it's right. And because I have to. Yeah, I agree. 100, 120% with you on that, because I was just having a conversation about, you know, a more about morning routines and how you start the day. And, you know, and I said, people are always like, oh, you must be a morning person because you get up. And I'm like, no, it, it doesn't have anything about be anything to do with being a morning person because I'm also a night person. I'm also a day person, you know, but I'm like, no, it's just that if I get up at thankfully due to being at home and working from home, now I can get up at six versus four 30. I can get up at six. I can work out. I can have my prayer and meditation time and I can take the dog out for a walk before I get started, you know, for work. And that, like you said, when doing that, it helps everybody else in my like 
sight or in my world that day because I've already gotten up and I've got my day off to get started. Like there's no hitting the snooze for me. Like when people are like, oh, you never hit snooze. I'm like, no, like, why are you prolonging the moment? Just get up. Like I know when it goes off at six that I'm going to get up. My mind is already like, I'm already set for that. Like get up and get moving Kyra. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It's so beautiful when you get to that place because it's, it's, it's impactful because, and it it makes a difference that you can be like that because then you're, you're helping other people to, to get there too. And it's like you said, it's just discipline. It's not that you want to get up and do that. I mean, like this morning, it's been raining here. I'm in Atlanta. It's been raining here like all day. And when I got up, there was nothing more I wanted to do than just turn around and go back and go to sleep. <laughs> but I was 100%. like, 100%. Can't do that. Gotta, you know, keep it moving, girl. It's Friday. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to serve your future self mm-hmm. either. No, not at all. So, um, no, I I like that. I like that. Um, Can you speak to your approach to coaching um, women and some of the programs that you offer? So I offer two types of coaching. I have one-on-one coaching to where it's just me and the client. And then I offer um, group coaching, which funny enough, I'm sure by the time it airs, it'll be open, but I'm doing a live training tonight and I'm opening it there for enrollment. So again, I'm working with the overworked, unfulfilled woman to find her fulfillment and her freedom. So we walk through The wonderful thing about my work is it's so personalized to each person and getting them what they need to get to that place because truly the path works. It looks different for everybody. And that's why sometimes I think coaches really pride themselves on like, this is my method and this is step one, two, and three. And I'm like, that's cool. But like, what if somebody's step one is different Then what do you do? Mm -hmm. Just force them into that box. So it's so personalized to getting somebody what they need, because sometimes we have to start a lot of my clients. We have to start with kind of like some small shifts that ripple into those bigger things, looking at habits, looking at routines, looking at schedules, looking at things like boundaries and saying no. And like, what can we shift right now to create some space so we can do this work? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. I think that's awesome. So um, as far as someone, because I before we get to the five things with Kelsey, I want to let you go ahead, A, tell people where they can find your book and how they can find you online to connect to you um, and your programs if they want to learn more or sign up. Yeah. So um, as far as like talking to me, my my coaching is invite only. So we would have to have a conversation there. But um, you can find me on Instagram at Kelsey Kenry, K-E-L-S-E-A, K-O-E-N-R-E-I-C-H. I still have to think about how to spell that. Um, <laughs> my website's the same, KelseyKenry.com. And then my book is below the surface and you can find it on Amazon. Fantastic. Fantastic. So now we're going to do five things with Kelsey. I love this part. (laughs) So first thing, I know we've talked through some of these things, but hey, you know, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? First thing you do when you get up. The first thing that I do is pee and then brush my (laughs) teeth. (laughs) That sounds like a good plan, right? (laughs) I mean, honesty is kind of my thing. So, yeah. Um, Are you a coffee, tea or tea drinker or none of the above? I drink one cup of coffee per day and that's it. Nice. I know. Right. I I don't know. Like when people are like drinking coffee all day. First of all, I drink decaf, but people are drinking coffee like all day. I'm like, how do you drink coffee all day? Like all day. No. My husband drinks like three energy drinks. I'm like, no, dude. Like if I have (laughs) caffeine after like noon I'm gonna be awake all night I guess so it's in the caffeine because I never really have it so yeah one cup of coffee that's all I need um how do you push through a challenging day I am a you can probably tell by how much I talk but I'm a I'm a verbal processor so mm-hmm. I need to get out of my head and talk to myself my husband a friend something and mm-hmm. actually get it out of my head and 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 somewhere else so I can get some feedback that's from somebody else on where I'm at or just have somebody listen to me, Mm -hmm. but holding it in doesn't serve me. Yes, I agree. It doesn't, it doesn't really serve any of us, but uh, here we are. There are a lot of people who are like holding it in. Um, How (laughs) rewarding um, was it to publish your book? 
if I'm going to be 100% honest, which I always promise myself to do, Mm -hmm. one of my biggest struggles and something that I've been working really hard on this year is finding more pride in my own accomplishments. Because Mm -hmm. as women, it's kind of just like, what's next? I hit the goal what's next. And I find, again, I see that in a lot of my clients. And so I've had to really dig into that myself. And so I will say that my book was probably the first thing that along the way, the milestones that I was hitting, Mm -hmm. I wasn't celebrating myself. But when I actually published the book and when I kept getting affirmations from the universe of your book is good with the testimonials Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, hitting number one and that kind of stuff, I, I did finally cry to where I was like, you did it. You know, I did yes. finally feel proud. So yeah, that's just the truth of it. You know, I, I'm, I'm a high achiever I, and I, and I love to achieve and produce just like most of us do. So it's, it's a work in progress, but I, I did feel really proud about yeah. accomplishing that. Yes. And you, as you should be. Yes. Um, how do you end the day? So I am a routine person. I think routine creates stability in our lives. So um, I have a night routine, simple. Um, I do skincare routine and then I read and go to bed. I also have a bedtime like a child. (laughs) (laughs) Not a bad thing. I mean, you have to have a bed. I I have no bedtime and I've, you know, and I was just talking about this. I'm like, um, I try to get in the bed at a certain time and then I like start, you know, maybe watching something that's like on TV that like doesn't cause me to have to think a lot because, you know, or I might read whatever. But generally, you know, next thing I know, I'm like, oh, it's 12 o'clock. Oh, that's the thing. That's like so many of my clients do that to where it's like. But here's the thing, and this is actually really important because it's something I talk to clients a lot about is like sleep is the number one thing you can do for your health. It is so important for your brain and for all of your functions. And I have found in a large majority of my clients that they don't prioritize sleep and that Mm -hmm. ripples into other things. So, but yeah, I mean, you're not alone in that. People just want to turn off and then you're like, on Netflix and Netflix doesn't help you because they want you to watch it for like 14 hours. So they're like, are you still, are you still watching? watching? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course I am. I'm just yeah. going to go ahead and finish this last episode. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Exactly. <laughs> that, was, that was me. Like maybe, um, maybe the other night I was like, went upstairs and I just started watching the undoing. And so I watched, cause I was like, let me see what this is all about. Everybody's talking about this. And I watched like one episode and I was like, oh, well maybe I'll just go ahead and watch another one. And then they say, I was like three and I was like, okay, I'm gonna save the other three for later. But you get in this place where you're just like, well, I'll just finish it off tonight. And then you've just over consumed so much information mm-hmm. and you're, you know, so I did, I did have enough sense. I was like, yep going to stop with this. And then I'm going to look at the rest later. (laughs) Yeah. But that's, you know, goes back to kind of like the beginning of our conversation to where it requires honesty with yourself. And you're like, that's not serving me. Yeah. We all do it. Yeah. I was like, just stop girl. Stop. So (laughs) tell me what's next for you. Um, what are you working on? What are you excited about, um, for next year? Oh man. So much stuff. So like, uh, my group coaching, opens in opens today. So that will start in January. So I'm pumped about that. And I'm actually working with an intern right now. So I'm going to do some speaking. Um, so all sorts of fun stuff, really, but just coaching, awesome. speaking, just, I joke about it, but really just trying to change the world. Awesome. Well, hey, you're doing a good job at it already. And um I have to tell you, this was a great, this was a, such a great conversation. I had so much fun. (laughs) Yes. I was like, I knew you were going to be a good time. (laughs) I had so much fun. It was great. It was great. I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy we got to connect though, because now I'm like, okay, we're going to be, we're going to be long distance friends for sure. That's right. That is right, girl. Um, But you know, I, I I wish you all the success in the world and you're always free to come back here and, and tell me stories tell the audience stories because I know everybody's going to love all of these analogies because you do paint a very vivid picture, but I really just appreciate transparency and your openness and willing to share 
your um, story because I think that is what resonates, um, just your authenticity. Uh, everything you talked about, you are living. So yeah. that matters. And um, I wish you all the best, Kelsey. Kelsey Kim yeah. Ryan. <laughs> There you go. There you go. There you so go. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're a professional. No, I, I thank you so much for having me. These these kind of conversations really, they really fuel me. So I appreciate your time. Awesome. Well, stay tuned, everybody. I'll be right back.